usually in developing country, um, the cervical cancer is one of the first cancers in women. Um, the infection by HPV, by papillomavirus, uh, is very broad. Almost uh, every person uh, at the beginning of their sexual life will be actually infected by a papillomavirus. And um, I do not really know uh, what is the prevalence of high-risk papillomavirus in India, mm -hmm. but in the Western country, uh, HPV-16, so the one that has a higher risk of progression to cervical cancer, is about uh, 30% in the general population. Mm -hmm. um, then, usually, uh, following the first exposure, the first infection, uh, which is around the, the beginning of the sexual life anyway, so will usually last two or three years. After that, um, the infection is uh, cleared by uh, the body. And, uh, and then the person in some way is uh, resistant to a further uh, uh, infection by the same genotype. Uh, unfortunately, um, some uh, percentage of the people actually will, uh, um, will have a persistent infection and which will eventually progress to a cancer, to cervical cancer. Um, and for instance, for the HPV-16, so the one with the highest risk of progression, uh, is one in 500 infected people who eventually will progress during their life. That means 30, 40 years following the first exposure. Um, so, um, what uh, we are trying to do uh, as an experimental procedure is to identify correlates of progression. So, the people who are at higher risk of progression, in, in order to have a, a closer monitoring, uh, but from a general prevention, public preventive uh, um, strategy, uh, the um, vaccine is very relevant because uh, in that case you can eradicate HPV-16. So now this is uh, uh, true for uh, HIV negative people, so for mm, let's say healthy people. For HIV infected instead also uh, the low risk papillomavirus can actually persist. We do not know if that is really, it will be um, associated with progression to cancer for sure, but what we know is that there is a persistence of the infections. We, we suspect that also what are considered low risk in the general population, eventually in HIV infected people it will could have a chance to progress. Uh, so then, if in that case, uh, the current vaccines would not be very effective because also the low risk would be able eventually to progress. It is very different for the men because men uh, with the HPV cancers, which are usually penile cancer, anal cancer and oropharyngeal cancers, they are always uh, related prevalently, for what we know up to now, to HPV-16. So for the male, uh, the current vaccination would be very, very effective. Most of the current vaccines yeah. used worldwide are actually produced in, in India. Mm -hmm. So uh, I suspect that sooner or later uh, also this strategy okay. will be very um, cheap or very um, not, not expensive and available also in India. Right. Obviously, I mean, uh, the message would be that uh, any preventive strategy would be very effective, especially for uh, uh, 
for the, the, the cervical cancer and for cancers associated with papillomavirus, which are not just cervical cancer. We have also anal cancer, who is uh, going up to 300 folds, uh, the uh, oropharyngeal cancers, which is uh, still related to HPV-16. So HPV vaccination would not just solve the problem of cervical cancers, but also other cancers and um, is relatively cheap considering now that from the beginning the costs were very high now are relatively uh, affordable and um, so uh, the message would be to vaccinate as much as uh, it is uh, possible um, and in any case if vaccination is not possible then um, close monitoring for HIV positive patients would be suggested, would be, would be uh, a very good recommendation, mm -hmm. uh, considering that uh, in women cervical cancer is the first cancer uh, um, in, the, in HIV positive women, uh, representing 40% of all cancers in HIV positive uh, subjects.